a little book too. <laughs> from both of us. I'm being closely watched <laughs> by my supervisor. Uh, and welcome back to our library tour uh, for 2022. You're going to be able to see the bean. I don't want to block the bean. Oh, there she is. How you doing, baby? Huh? How's the baby? <laughs> Those beady brown eyes. <laughs> uh, we are back into my library tour. We are finishing up this middle bookcase uh, with a shelf on the floor. Uh, and we're going to do uh, transverse books first. Uh, the, the the bottom shelf, I did not push all the books all the way to the back and stack stuff in front of it because I knew I wouldn't be able to see the books. <laughs> I kept them I kept them all the way to the front, so we don't have as many books to deal with today. Uh, the first one is a uh, romance novel that I bought on Amazon. This is, I think, self-published. Uh, this is Marry Me If You Dare by Alyssa Clark, uh, which I got for a particular item on the cover. <laughs> for uh, a, a Paul Marin cover, simply cannot be turned down, even if it's self-published. <laughs> uh, and then we have... Uh, the books themselves, starting with this big thing, this big hardcover, which does not belong in here. Uh, this is a biography, John Dryden and His World, by uh, James Anderson Wynn, who's a fantastic author. And this is, so far, the best book ever done on John, on John Donne, the best biographical study ever, ever done. Uh, I had the trade paperback forever and ever, and it was falling apart. So I, uh, when, I, when the hardcover turned up at the Brattle, I grabbed it. Uh, I cannot recommend it strongly enough if you're interested in John Dryden, but since you're not, we'll move right on. <laughs> uh, then we have a classic work. This is also very recent. This I uh, just found, I think, last year. Uh, this is a uh, a very interesting bilingual uh, edition of Catullus. With, uh, you know, the, the, a good text on one side and an, at least a... a attempt at a literal translation on the other side, I found it fascinating to the point where uh, I, I highlighted a lot, I, uh, I annotated it a lot, and by the time I was done, I was really wishing that I'd found a hardcover. I found a paperback, and I'm never going to see the paperback again, or a hardcover, so I grabbed it. Uh, then this next one, I love. I uh, had a trade paperback of this forever and ever, was very happy to find a hardcover so that my trade paperback could be retired in peace. Uh, this is The Complete Works of Horace. Uh, Translated in the original meters by Charles Passage. I had a green trade, trade paperback of this forever and ever, and I found a battered uh, hardcover in 2009 um, and just grabbed it. <laughs> I absolutely grabbed it. It, it uh, highlights a familiar refrain in this library tour, which is that it's a Horace book, which means it belongs with the other Horace books. It doesn't belong all by itself. Uh, same thing with the Catullus book. I should have a shelf of classical works, and I don't, but I will. <laughs> uh, the next one is uh, Max Eastman, who was a, a very, very influential man of letters and political figure, uh, political theorizer and popularizer, uh, a long time ago. So in American history, so that you know, you'd have to talk about your grandparents to to really to really know his name. Uh, I think he's a fantastic writer. I absolutely love him. I grab books of his whenever I find them. Even this book, uh, his his big and very popular book, Enjoyment of Laughter, which is essentially one huge book of him explaining the joke. That's all he does throughout the course of this book is explain jokes to you, uh, which ought to be lethal, right? That ought to be absolutely lethal. There's nothing that'll make you seem like more of a boring pedant to, than to explain a joke. I ought to know. I do it often enough myself. Uh, but he's such a charming writer that you don't mind. I don't mind anyway. I thought this was uh, thoroughly enjoyable. I read it years and years ago. I borrowed a copy from uh, a private library here in Boston uh, and loved it, but it never crossed my mind to walk up the hill or walk across the street to a, a retail bookstore and... Uh, and buy a copy. That never crossed my mind to do. What would I have paid for that copy? Uh, what, the, what, would, what would I have paid for this, I wonder? $3.75. That never occurred to me to do. So so when it went out of print and eventually everything by Eastman went out of print, I thought, well, you know, there'll always be libraries. But libraries de-access stuff like him. They don't get a call for it anymore. Uh, so I was overjoyed to find it. 
at the Brattle. It was in rough shape, but I rescued it. Uh, then we have a, a new book. Oh, this has a sheet in it. Uh, no, it does not. I wonder why not. Uh, this was from 2020. This is The Glorious American Essay by Philip Lopate, who I think we've already seen in this room. He did a fantastic anthology called The Art of the Personal Essay. And he, much later on, followed it up with a trilogy of volumes about the American essay. Uh, the Glorious American Essay, from, this is from colonial times to the present, then there was the Contemporary American Essay, and uh, one other. Of course, the maddening thing here is that they're not all together in this room. <laughs> is, is this it? Yes, the Golden Age of the American Essay. So the Golden Age of the American Essay, the Contemporary American Essay, and the Glorious American Essay were the trilogy that he did. And it's maddening enough that these aren't in the same place here in this room. Even more maddening is that they they weren't issued in the same format. The glory, the contemporary American essay, and the the uh, the, the other, I don't remember the name of it. I'm not going to reach up again. They were issued as paperback. This was issued as a hardcover. So it's a it, it's a, a nightmare for the anal retentive type A person out there because you're going to have to wait for this to come out in paperback and hope that it's in the same size as the other two. Uh, but he's lost none of his skill at assembling and annotating essays. The, the, the trilogy is terrific. Uh, they're scattered all around, I think, maybe because of just an accidental mental comment on my part that there, it was a weird decision to publish them this way. I mean, publish them... If, you, if you're going to have the second two volumes in the trilogy come out as paperbacks only, then publish the first one as a paperback only. Or... Well, one way or another, we've got two more of those volumes to get to. As far as American essay collections go, I cannot recommend it strongly enough. And boy, do I recommend the art of the personal essay. Definitely get that. Uh, okay, then we... <laughs> all right, then we. I mentioned a private library here in Boston where I borrowed Max Eastman a long, long time ago. I borrowed that book and read it long before most of you were born. Uh, that library was the Boston Athenaeum, uh, right across the street from... Uh, the hotel where John F. Kennedy's presidential campaign was ma was masterminded, uh, and just a, a little bit diagonal from the State House. Uh, and this is a Boston Athenaeum gallery uh, from 1827 to 1873. So this is uh, a sort of an original history. There's a lot of history of the Athenaeum in here, but also this is a a study, a writing about all of the artwork that's in the Athenaeum. The Athenaeum is not just a library. It's also basically an art museum. Where did the bean go? Oh, that's her. She's there. She's just suffered and she's suffused with sunlight. Uh, there's art all over the Athenaeum, just hanging there. And it, all of it has a history. All of it is fascinating. And people over the years have written about the Athenaeum's artwork quite a bit. Uh, and this is an early version of that. And so is the next one. This is the Athenaeum Centenary. Uh, this is much more of a history than a guide through the artwork, but still. Uh, I am lucky uh, to live, to have access to the Brattle Bookshop here in Boston, a used bookstore that's, you know, right a, a city block away from the Athenaeum. And I'm lucky to have access to them because that's where books like this turn up. Whenever I see anything there that's that has to do with the Athenaeum, I grab it because I have many, many fond memories of that library. Don't go back anymore. Uh, I cannot justify it. When everything that I would do there, I can do here without making my dog miss me. It's as simple as that. She doesn't get to come and go as she pleases. She, it's the one freedom I deny her. So, if, And when I'm gone, she is unhappy. She misses me, and I miss her. So as long as the work can be duplicated here, I don't bother anymore. Uh, what is this next one? Also old. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, this is an edition of Dante. This is not the Divine Comedy. This is the La Vida Nuova. This is the, the New Life. Uh, translated by Charles Eli Eliot Norton. Now, you're going to make that out. Uh, a figure that we've seen on this channel. Uh, uh, a figure that would be hard to explain to modern-day America. A universally re regarded and, and respected public intellectual. Uh, and this is his translation of uh, Dante's disarming little work of pseudo-autobiography. Uh, that again, I found at the Brattle and was happy to do so because you never see stuff like this anywhere. In a used books, a normal used bookstore, you would never find any of them. Uh, and then the last thing here, I had an advanced copy of this, a, a review copy from the publisher forever and ever, but I go back to it so often. 
uh, as you can see. I go back to it so often that the, that trade paperback was, I reinforced it and then I reinforced it again, but I knew that it was not long for this world and I never saw it in a hardcover, uh, which I take as a sign that people who get this thing tend to hold on to it. They, they really like it. They like it as much as I do. Uh, but I did eventually find it in a hardcover. This is World Poetry, an anthology of verse from antiquity to our time. Uh, Catherine Washburn, John Major are, are the editors. Great big thing that I found in hardcover. I transferred all of my notes. I transferred all of my uh, marginalia very lovingly over the course of a whole afternoon. I translated all my bookmarks. This is a, a big, wide-ranging poetry anthology. It is not just the greats of Sidney and Spencer. It's all over the world, all kinds of poetic traditions. Uh, and really well done. I, it's unconventional. It's not like a normal poetry anthology, but I love it. Absolutely love it. Uh, and because I have arranged this shelf this way, uh, without pushing the books back, even though technically that would mean I could fit 10 more books. Uh, because I've arranged this shelf this way, it's easy for me to reach. I can just reach down and grab it. Uh, but there'll be no more reaching down for this library tour for a little while. We are now ending this bookcase, so the next one we go up to the sky. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm going to need a footstool for the next library tour. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. I will wrap this up for now and wake the bean. Oh, no, she's awake. <laughs> there we go. And I will see you soon. Thank you, Booktube.